As GOP frontrunner Mitt Romney tries to shore up votes to clinch today's primaries, and Romney's decision to hire this openly gay man, Richard Grinnell, as his foreign policy spokesperson, has one conservative radio host fuming. We're talking about Brian Fisher, the director uh, of issue analysis at the American Family Association. Fisher gave Romney a political lashing, tweeting and writing this on his blog. The message Governor Romney appears to be sending to the pro-family community through his Grinnell appointment is drop dead. Brian Fisher joins me now via Skype, along with the executive director of Log Cabin Republicans, R. Clark Cooper. Brian, let's go ahead and start with you. Clearly, you feel strongly that Romney, as you put it on your blog, quote, stepped on a landmine. Why? Well, a real issue for the evangelical base, the social conservative base, is where does Governor Romney stand on the issues of values, the issues of marriage, the issues of human sexuality? And this, I think, is an alarming signal for the governor to send. Particularly, he did this right after Richard Land of the Southern Baptist Convention endorsed him. Robert Jeffress of Dallas First Baptist Church endorsed him. The National Organization for Marriage endorsed him. And then right on the heels of that, Governor Romney picks as the face of his campaign on national security and foreign policy, a man who is not just a homosexual, but is a homosexual activist who is actively working uh, for, on the behalf of homosexual marriage. That's a great concern to people in the evangelical base. Do you believe that openly gay people should not be hired in the GOP? Well, the real issue here is for Governor Romney and what he thinks about homosexual behavior. His church, you know, my complaint about Governor Romney all the way along is not that he's Mormon, but that he's not Mormon enough. Now, according to the Encyclopedia of Mormonism, the Mormon church believes that homosexual behavior is sinful and that homosexual acts are offensive to God. So the question that needs to be asked of Governor Romney do you agree with the teaching of your church? If you do, but, that homosexual acts are offensive to God, then why but, have but you Brian, made the face of your campaign someone who engages in conduct that your own church but, says is offensive to God? But Brian, if you don't agree with your church, it, then how can you expect the evangelical base to support you? But, but we're talking about the separation of church and state here. Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that what Americans want? They want a president that isn't going to make decisions based on his religious beliefs. He's, no, going for, he's going for, in his words, the most qualified person. But, Kira, you cannot separate religious liberty from the issue of the homosexual agenda. In fact, the homosexual agenda represents the single greatest threat to religious liberty and freedom of association in America today. And Clark from the Log Cabin Republicans ought to know that. He was an Eagle Scout. Boy Scouts ran into enormous trouble on religious liberty and associational issues because they would not allow homosexuals to serve as scoutmasters. He knows the threat Clark, that I'll let homosexual you step in. lobby represents Clark? to freedom of association. Sure. Please, yeah, please. Well, okay. Go ahead, Clark. Uh, Kira, yeah, you mentioned the, the point of separation of church and state. Look, Governor Romney didn't hire Rick because Rick happens to be a Protestant. If anything, he hired Rick because he's immensely qualified as a foreign policy national security technocrat. Uh, Rick is the ideal candidate. He was hired based on his qualifications and his experience in the Bush administration, not because of his orientation. If anything, Rick's orientation had nothing to do with the hiring process. Let me, well, you Kara, know, my that, response to well, that, that would be, that, Clark, if, if his hiring had nothing to do with homosexuality, why did so many homosexual groups like the Log Cabin Republicans come out and celebrate this appointment if it had nothing to do with homosexuality and normalizing homosexual behavior? Go ahead, Clark. One's political affiliation and one's religion are choices. One's orientation is not a choice. And when it comes to matters of individual liberty and individual responsibility, which are core conservative tenets, we all recognize that freedom means freedom for everyone. Dick Cheney said that. The younger conservative recognizes that. And again, we're talking about someone's qualifications as a spokesperson on national security issues is based on their experience and their, their ability to be able to speak candidly honestly, and also with a, a background that is relevant to what's happening in the national security portfolio today. Again, Rick's orientation has nothing to do with his experience in working in the national security uh, framework. Brian, Brian, let me ask you, I mean, and just off of what Clark is saying and, and what you have said when we start talking about uh, background and qualifications, I mean, if you take a look here at Grinnell's resume, we're talking over two decades of experience at the local, state, federal level, appointed by George W. Bush in 2001 as director of communications. He's got a master's degree from Harvard. Why would this not qualify him to be a part of Mitt Romney's campaign? 
Well, the reality is, Kira, that Richard Grinnell is not the only qualified individual out there that Governor Romney could have chosen. He knows about his past. He knows about his sexual preferences. He knows about his activism on behalf of the homosexual agenda. He made a deliberate, intentional choice to pick this man as the face of his campaign on national security issues. Uh, out of all the qualified applicants he could have chose, he picked a man who was a homosexual activist. That's the thing that's sending off alarm bells in the evangelical community because, as I mentioned, I share with Clark, our concern is for liberty. Our concern is for li religious liberty, and we recognize the threat that homosexual activism, the homosexual agenda, but, opposes, uh, imposes, or uh, imposes on religious liberty, and Brian, that's our concern. Well, well, Where's Governor Romney at? But we're talking about foreign policy and national security issues here. I mean, did you like the way John Bolton, did you think John Bolton did a good job when he was U.S. Ambassador to the U.N.? And Kira, Ambassador, yeah. Ambassador, yeah. Ambassador Bolton no, and Ambassador Brian. Brian, had he, no, Hold on, hold on well, wait, wait, just a second, Clark. Brian, did he do a good job? Did John Bolton do a good job? <laughs> He did a great job. Oh, okay, well, but, okay, Again, Grinnell this was, was his spokesperson. Correct. Grinnell was his spokesperson, so and did Bolton that make him care any less about of about one's orientation. I can tell you that Ambassador Bolton had no issue with Rick's orientation, my orientation, neither did Ambassador Kalzad. My security clearance and Rick's security clearance was, had nothing to do with our orientation. It was our ability to be able to perform our jobs in the national security portfolio, and, that's, and he's qualified for that. Governor Romney well, has Kira. picked the best and brightest, and George Bush picked the best and brightest. So uh, good on Governor Romney, good on President Bush being able to uh, pick candidates uh, to serve in their campaigns and eventually in a Romney administration, uh, those who are the strongest when it comes to foreign policy and national security. And Brian, I just thought that was interesting. You thought Bolton did a great job and Grinnell was his spokesperson. Well, the point here is that personnel is policy. Everybody in D.C. says that personnel is policy. When Governor Romney picks somebody who's an active activist homosexual and puts him in a prominent position, he's sending a shout out, it seems to me, to the homosexual lobby. And it's absurd, Kira, to say this is not about sexual orientation, sexual preference, because we wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking to a representative of the log cabin Republicans if they didn't recognize that this is a big gain for the homosexual lobby, and that's why we're concerned. Final thought, Clark. Well, I prefer to be a Republican, and I prefer to be a practicing Episcopalian. Uh, my orientation, my happening to be gay is not a choice. So um, when you talk about preference, sure, I can choose who I vote for, uh, and I can choose how I practice my faith because, because we have that liberty. Uh, but again, freedom means freedom for everyone, not for some. And, you know, Brian, y'all got to be careful because you're starting to sound like George Wallace, segregation today, segregation tomorrow. Uh, be careful because uh, you're going to be less in the dustbin of history, buddy. Clark? Well, Brian, Clark, there's no equivalence between sexual orientation and race. People are born we're into have a race. To, sexual orientation is a matter of choice and preference. We're, we're going to have to Not a choice. There. Clark Cooper, Brian Fisher, you Thank both you. made your points. I appreciate both of you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.